Good evening. It may tonight be the most anxiety producing 14 mile stretch of interstate highway in America. Authorities have confirmed that today, for at least the 11th time in two weeks, a vehicle has been shot at while hit and hit traveling down I-10 in Phoenix with several more potential new cases right now under investigation. Police say a shooter or shooters has been targeting motorists, striking cars, trucks and buses. Luckily, no one has been hurt so far, but the fear of being hit is palpable for many who are simply avoiding this route at all cost. Police in Phoenix confirm a delivery truck was shot at today. That's now at least 11 vehicles that have come under fire on or near the I-10 in the past two weeks. And investigators say they may be dealing with more than one gunman. Maria Villarreal is there. Arizona State Highway Troopers are now offering... Between August 27th and September 10th of 2015, Interstate 10 in Phoenix, Arizona was a dangerous stretch of road. Not because of motor vehicle accidents, however, but because of an unknown shooter targeting drivers traveling on that road. Ten shootings occurred on Interstate 10 between that period of time. Yet another shooting occurred on State Route 202. Three of the vehicles struck were passenger cars, three were pickup trucks, two were box trucks, one was an SUV, one was a tour bus, and one was a semi. Eight of the attacks were confirmed to be from a ballistic weapon. For the other attacks, the projectile was unspecified. Miraculously, with all of these attacks, no one was killed. The only injury that was sustained was by a 13-year-old girl who got cut by broken glass. As you can imagine, this many shootings occurring within such a short period of time in such a high traffic area put the public on edge. People were afraid to drive on any of the main roads where the attacks occurred. Media outlets relentlessly covered the investigation in the search to find the shooter. Law enforcement officials are also seeking the public's help. Drivers are nervous. If the police can't find this person, then what are we supposed to do? I just try to go to day, day to day and hopefully nothing happens. It's a big puzzle. We're trying to put all the pieces together right now to complete it and get a, a, a broader view of what's going on so that we can find out the person or persons that are doing this. I had a flood of emotions uh, from anger to fear to just not wanting to, to leave my house. Um, it was something that you felt like just happened to somebody else or something that you see on the news, you don't feel like it's going to happen to you. This is the case of Leslie Allen Merritt and the Phoenix Highway shootings. Following the shootings, there was a public outcry for justice. Motorists were fearful to be on the roads and local officials and law enforcement were eager to get a suspect in custody to quell the panic. This led to quite a few investigative missteps early on. A reward was issued for anyone who provided information leading to the arrest of the shooter, initially at $20,000. It was eventually increased to $50,000. Three 18-year-old males were arrested on suspicion of using a slingshot to break vehicle windows. After looking into it further, law enforcement concluded that this was an unrelated incident to the freeway shootings and labeled it a copycat incident. Start now with your breaking news and more developments in the freeway shootings. Thanks for joining us tonight. I'm Kim Tobin. DPS and Sheriff Joe Arpaio announcing the arrest of three teenagers accused of being copycats. Now we just got their mug shots here. Take a look. The three are accused of using a slingshot to shoot out windows and shoot at pedestrians in the East Valley. They are Aaron Nottingham, Albert German and Christian Cook. The item was a slingshot and when we talk a lot about projectile, this is one of those projectile type shootings. 
Uh, they were using uh, granite and a slingshot to shoot at uh, pedestrians and cars. Then, a 19-year-old man named Oscar de la Torre Muniz was arrested and labeled as the primary suspect in the shooting spree by the Arizona Department of Public Safety. A DPS not confirming to us if he's a suspect or not at this point. This is exclusive video of him being arrested Friday in Avondale. However, they declined to comment on what it was that led them to question him. It was later speculated that he had bragged to a friend about being the shooter. After a while, investigators concluded that he most likely wasn't the prime suspect in the shooting, but they were investigating him regarding, quote, a number of other things. With the investigation turning into so many dead ends, the media, the public, and investigators needed to find the Phoenix Highway shooter as soon as possible. Enter Leslie Allen Merritt, Jr. ABC 15 Breaking News. Is this the guy who's been terrorizing our valley freeways? DPS arresting Leslie Merritt Jr. saying he is their guy, at least for some of the shootings. ABC 15 first on the air with this news tonight. And we have live team coverage on every angle of this story, how they found him, where they found him, and we're uncovering all kinds of details about his past. We have crews spread all across the valley. John Erickson live where Merritt was arrested. Ballistics experts and forensic investigators had been working behind the scenes to try to identify the gun that was used in the various shootings. They eventually were able to tie the gun that was sold to a pawn shop in late August. A gun that belonged to Leslie Merritt. Officers quickly arrested Merritt on September 18th, 2015, which prompted a tweet by the governor of Arizona, Doug Ducey, saying, We got him. DPS SWAT team is in custody of the individual suspected of the I-10 shooting, apprehended moments ago. Shortly after this, investigators interrogated Merritt. Here is footage from that interrogation. At this point in the interrogation, Leslie Merritt has been told by the interrogating officers that he's being formally arrested. He has also been read his rights after which both officers leave him alone in the room for a few minutes before returning to start the interrogation in earnest. Back in the room at 2309 hours. Okay, Leslie, why do you think you're here? Dude, I got no clue, man. Not at all. I got off work, went to go cash my check, and yes, I know whole damn world in my face with guns. Why do you, why do you think you would be here? I have an idea, man. Traffic take or something? I don't know. I don't. Anything that you can think of that you might have done or something that would no, get man. you here? Been staying out of trouble. Okay. All right. Um, do you own a uh, nine millimeter high point? Yeah. Some automatic handgun? Okay. Um, Tell me about that. How did you come in possession of that handgun? I bought it from Cabela's, brand okay. new in the box. All right, and do you remember when you purchased it? Oh, shit. It's got to be a couple weeks after I turned 21. Okay, and when did you turn 21? June 20th of this so, year. And so you're, and you're saying a couple weeks or a couple months? It's got to be about a month at least, yeah. Okay, all right. And do you recall what you paid for it? Hundred and thirty nine dollars. Hundred and sixty five with a box of ammo. Okay. And what kind of ammo did you purchase with it? What was it called? Like herders or some cheap eleven ninety nine box. Okay. Did you get that at the same time that you purchased mm -hmm. the gun at Cabela's? Yeah. And I also had should have reported it, but I didn't but but probably a month ago I had two hundred and fifty Winchester rounds. I had them in my trunk because I was gonna go to the range and someone stole them out of my trunk. Okay. Not my gun, my gun's been at the pawn shop for the last month, a month and a half. Okay. And um, when you purchased the gun, what was the purpose or the reason for you to purchase the gun? Because I can carry it. Oh, carry it for what reason? Well, I live in Glendale, man. Okay, you is know, Glendale a bad place? I mean, it's a pretty shitty neighborhood, but it's affordable for me and my family, so. Okay, okay. And when you purchased it, um, have you ever lent it out to anybody or? No. No, so, so you always have possession of, of yeah. that 9 millimeter. I, I pawned it a couple of times, but that's it. I've had it. Okay, well, tell me about those incidents that you pawned it. Well, the first time, 
Any of the money for formula and electricity? All right, well, let's go right here to Mo' Money Pines on 12th Street in Indian School. Gave me what they gave me the first time. I think they gave me 60 the first time, and then 60 again, and then 70. Okay, so you pawned it three times? Yep. And at the same pawn shop, Mo' Money Pawn? Yep, every time. Okay, when was the first time that you pawned it? I don't know, man. It's been a little while. Okay, well, to you, what's a little while? Maybe two months. Two months ago, okay. And then the second time that you pawned it? About a week after I got it right back out of pawn. Okay, and then the most recent time that you pawned it? Probably about a month and a half. A month and a half ago? Yeah. And it's just been sitting there. I've okay. Had it. So you're saying that it's been at Mo Money Pond for the last month and a half? Mm -hmm. I mean, I got it out, had it with me for a week, put it back because I needed something. Got it out, put it back, got it out, put it back. Okay, so are you positive the most recent time that you pawned it was a month and a half? I'm fairly certain. Matter of fact, if you guys have my vehicle, the pawn ticket's in my car. Well, I've, well, here's the deal. I know when you pawned it, so I just want to make sure because that's that's an incorrect date. It wasn't a month and a half ago. That's where it's at, man. Okay. Well, I know where it was at, mm -hmm. but I'm just saying you didn't pawn it a month and a half ago. So let's see. Okay, I can I can do about about three weeks then. Three weeks. It has to be because I got paid. Shortly after that, I didn't have enough money to pay some bills, so I went and pawned it. I said, all right, I'll be back in two weeks, and now it's been four weeks. Okay. Um, tell me um, about your work schedule. Uh, before we, let me go back on this. Who do you work for? Landscape Excellence. Okay, and how long have you been working for them? Six months. Okay, and um, what is your work schedule with them? Well, up until when I started in February, it was what, seven to four, then it started getting hot, so we went to 5.30 to 2, and now we're at 6 to 2.30. Okay, and... Um, Lately, we've had quite a bit of overtime coming in. Okay. All right. Last week I had five hours extra. Okay, and then what are your days that you work? Monday through Friday. Monday through Friday. Occasionally Saturdays if the boss asks us, who wants to work so I want. Okay, when's the last time that you worked a Saturday? Um, Labor Day. Labor Day? Because we work Saturday to make for Labor Day. Okay. Um, tell me about your day on August 29th of this year. August 29th. Would have been a Saturday, Sorry. August 29th. That's right before Labor Day, huh? Does that work? No, I just, I'm just August asking you if you can take me through your day. Wait, man, I'll be honest. I don't keep track of my days. Man, I go to work, I come home, I eat, and I sleep. I go to work, I come home, I eat, and I sleep. Okay. All right, on the weekends, um, do I you go stay home or go to my mother-in-law's or other, other family members' house. Do you ever go out shooting or anything? Every once in a while, yeah. Okay, how often do you go shooting? I think I've shot that gun until four separate occasions. Four separate occasions? Mm -hmm. Okay. And do you do that normally on the weekends? Mm -hmm. When's the last time that you went out shooting with it? How was that? Where was it? I went to uh, it was 91st and Bell Road at Shooter's World. And that had to have been. I don't even know, man. Two, okay. three months at least. I haven't. I mean, last time I shot it, I cleaned it and I put it away. And now it's at the pawn shop. Clean. Okay. Well, are you, a fi are you familiar with all these shootings that have been occurring on I 10? Yeah, yeah. Okay, well tell me what you know about these shootings that have been occurring on I-10. I know they've happened from like 83rd to 16th Street, mm -hmm. something like that. What else do you know about They got a couple guys already that are, what do they call them? Suspects and being questioned. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, well that's what we're here to talk about, mm -hmm. okay? Um, I won't beat around the bush anymore. Let's, let's I'm a suspect get, in that, yeah. you, You're beyond a suspect in this, okay? How am I beyond and, a suspect? Well, I'm going to tell you right now that the your nine millimeter high point, we have it. Mm -hmm. It's been removed out of pawn, and it was the weapon that was used in these shootings. It has been How it has be been right? scientifically analyzed by our crime lab, okay. and it has been shown that mm -hmm. bullets that were recovered from our crime scenes came from that gun. Okay. Now, is there? Someone can explain to me how my gun got out of pawn without me? Absolutely. Because I have seized not. it. We seized it. Okay. okay. Um, obviously, we've done a lot of work on this and done a lot of investigative work. Talked to a lot of people. You just saw a couple people that we've talked to today. We've talked to numerous people regarding this, numerous people that know you. And uh, so we got a feel 
I have no idea. Forty. How. I mean, they're beginning their practice. Well, here's here's the thing. Nobody's been hurt yet. Okay, but okay. I'm you, sir, nobody I'm got hurt. Nobody got hurt. A single shot on the freeway. Well, I'm telling you, I go down the shooter road and I go down the by PIR and I shoot at the water. Here, listen, listen. I'm not going to argue the facts with no, you. No, I understand. So but I have the facts. I have the facts in here. Okay, and what I'm here <coughs> is obviously this doesn't look good. Yeah. Okay. You tell me this. It's a shock to me, bro. People, people do things. Maybe they're having a bad day. Maybe they're frustrated. Maybe things are going That's on in their me, personal man. life. That's not me. Well, I know your, what weapon, your weapon, weapon was is a weapon and it can hurt somebody. Your weapon was involved in it. And I don't understand how. Well, here's the deal. I don't. Is this you? Yeah, it's me. Okay. We've done all this investigative research. He has it right there. And... Guess who's in the middle of that picture right there? Me. Exactly. And where, where are all of these lines joining at? Where are they all meeting at? Me. Okay, so that tells you right there that everything that we've done investigative-wise, everything that we have evidence-wise, all keeps pointing to you. And I'm trying to give you the opportunity here, Leslie, to sit there and explain to me why you did it. Sir, I have nothing to explain. I did not do this, man. Well, I'm telling you, we have your Facebook post. Merritt's social media, primarily his Facebook posts, became a major key for law enforcement in profiling him as the shooter. This was backed heavily by news outlets as they played Merritt's posts on their platforms during the investigation. Well, DPS is now play saying social media actually played a role in apprehending Merritt. On his Facebook page, we found multiple posts defending gun rights and the Second Amendment, and at least four videos showing Merritt firing a weapon. That includes two videos posted in July showing Merritt firing a handgun. Now, in the video, he identifies that weapon as a 9mm, the same kind of weapon that is believed was used in the first four shootings. And I also found numerous posts showing what appears to be a general distrust of the government, even reports from conspiracy theory websites, which raise questions about Jade Helm, the military exercise in a number of states that survivalists believe is part of a government conspiracy to disarm or even microchip American citizens. What's that? What I post? Uh, everything. You have a lot of posts on there regarding these shootings that are occurring on I-10. We so just I, didn't I follow we, the media. No, it's not a matter of following the media. Oh, because I believe in the no, second. No, no. Here's what the deal is. These guys that you said that we arrested these three suspects. As soon as these people got arrested, you're up and on this Facebook. They're on your Facebook yeah, posting all them, these man. things. You're, ta them. you're tagging Damon. That's and the buddy. reason and the reason you're doing that is because you're basically trying to let Damon know, hey, look, they got these guys. They're not the guys that no, did this. What it is. My buddy right there, he believes in conspiracy theories and think the government's out to get everybody. So I tag him in it so he can read it. Well, that's interesting that after we arrest these guys and all of a sudden you're posting this stuff, why didn't you post it before on Facebook? It's interesting to note the differences in various interrogation tactics between different officers and departments. However, if you see enough of them, you'll begin to notice some patterns. In particular, in how aggressive the interrogating officer initially comes off. By minute 12 of this interview, the primary interrogating officer has already leveled a direct accusation against Merritt. And by minute 15, he has already revealed a majority of the evidence pointing them in Merritt's direction. Mainly, the bullet analysis pointing them to the gun owned by Merritt, and some posts on social media regarding the shootings. Leads for sure, but definitely not as solid as the officers would like. And they know it. When an overwhelming amount of evidence is acquired against a suspect, you will probably notice the interrogation follow a different pattern. Much slower, much more methodical, lulling the suspect into a false sense of security before gradually revealing the evidence piece by piece like an anaconda wrapping around its prey. The strategy behind this slow, methodical approach is that, as it goes on, the subject will be creating multiple lies to cover up the crime as they relate their story to investigators. As the investigators then slowly reveal the evidence, one by one those lies get disproven on camera and recorded. Each one of those disproven lies becomes evidence in itself should the interrogation video be played during the trial. 
In a situation like this, where there isn't a whole lot of evidence, and most of the evidence that is gathered is circumstantial, the investigators are pushed into being much more aggressive early on in an attempt to get the suspect to incriminate himself as he tries to deal with the flood of accusations being leveled at him all at once. This is the tactic they're trying to use against Merritt. It has nothing to do with the arrest or anything. I've been following the whole story. Well, it's not on your Facebook till after these guys get arrested. So all of a sudden, then now you get some type of interest in it. I've just been following it. So explain to me how your weapon that has been scientifically tested. I don't tested, know. I can't tell you how. I don't know. Well, here, you have a weapon that you purchased. Yes. Okay, you're the only person that has owned that weapon. Yep. Um, you just told me and I just got that information from everybody else that I spoke to, that you've never lent that gun out to anybody. Nobody else borrows it. You have it with you at all times. So it's never been out of your possession. It comes back ballistically. That's okay. Test it, and it comes back to those bullets. You check every camera on the I-10 the last one. I have not been on the fucking I-10. Here's here's, here's the thing that's funny that you said that. Funny thing that you said that. That is, those cameras have been up, and those cameras cover every mile on the interstate. And guess who we saw on that video? It's been recorded. You have guess of who? Venezuela can show me? I got video in there. I got video in there. So if you need to see that video to sit there and prove the point, rather than being okay, a man, so rather than being a man and just admit I'll tell you where I've been. I went to 44th Street and Chandler Boulevard because I have a job there. Her name's Nancy Lutz. We get her yard. This has nothing to do with That's anything to do. This has account. nothing to do with your work or any of this. Okay, well I'm telling you, I have not found. You're familiar you. with what I am telling you. Yes, you sir. know. Yeah, but I'm telling you, I follow them. I can't follow shit. I'm not even talking about your Facebook anymore. I'm, I'm talking. Fired. I'm talking. There's there. There's no. It, it's just not out of the blue that you're here, Leslie. Dude, you it know? really is because I've not fired it's, my it's weapon not out of, two it's, it's, it's not out of the blue. You're here for a reason. You wouldn't be here if there wasn't evidence for you to be here. And I'm all I'm trying to do is I'm, trying, I'm just trying to give you the opportunity to maybe explain why this happened. Like I said- Well, I'm not gonna admit this. Hold on, I hold, not hold, do, man. hold on, Leslie. I'm just telling you, and I'm just gonna let you know, everybody's human. Yeah. And sometimes good people do stupid things. There are a few common tactics interrogators will use that all fall under the same general umbrella. Diminishing the crime, insisting that deep down the suspect is a good person, like they're doing here, or somehow justifying the crime, like saying everyone has a bad day. This is intended to make a guilty subject more likely to confess because the shame and guilt of what they've done is lightened somewhat by the interrogating officer. And, and, and you know what I mean? Sometimes they do stupid things and there's stuff going on or there's just... Mm -hmm. A reason that they do it and all I'm saying is is I'm trying to give you the opportunity here to explain to me why you did this was there something going Dude, on I didn't did do it. you was, keep saying was, why I did it why well, I did not do it your gun was used yeah, I swear on the Bible I put on my kids well, life I did not Bible, do the it Bible's, the Bible's not gonna help right now because okay, but well, I didn't I'm do telling it, you I have I evidence I understand I understand but I have not fired my weapon man that's the thing I have not fired my weapon well um, here's this your weapon, who you have in your possession yes. at all times, yes. you've never lent you it to anybody. Ferry, okay. No, I didn't find it on the ferry. I'm telling you that there's bullets that were fired from your gun that were removed from cars. How is that possible, man? I have not fired my weapon. I know we're telling you, months, the ballistic tests don't lie. Well, then there has to be some kind of mix-up, man, because there I'm is, not... There is no mix-up. I have not fired my there's gun in no, two months, man. Did you know that there's over 286,000 high-point guns? It, and you put it with a microscope and you line up the groups. I understand I am how telling it works. You, there are 286,000 high-point mm -hmm. handguns that mm -hmm. have been sold, mm -hmm. and we just, out of the blue, find your gun? No, I don't know how it is, man. I think maybe can you guys been watching my Facebook. Oh, oh no, 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 so let's no, no, no. Your gun, your gun took us to your Facebook. Dude, buy guns, man, a damn pawn shop. How is this possible, man? I am telling you. I am telling you, because I know when you pawned it. You pawned it. You pawned it on the day after the last shooting that we connected to your gun. Period. You pawned it on August 30th. And it was right after the last shooting that we had on the freeway that was connected to your gun. You pawned it after the last shooting. We have videotape of you Pond. Pond we have so all many. the pawn records, so I know the day that you pawned it. I know the time that you pawned it. And I'm telling you, I have videotape from the freeway with your silver car. 
I have ballistic test that comes back yeah, to you your gun. Yeah, you ever my gun out of my Absolutely. car? Absolutely. Bullshit. Absolutely. I have not fired my gun, dude. That's well, bullshit. I'm just telling you. Like I said, we're here because I have evidence. To I understand you have evidence, man, but I'm telling you, I haven't fired well, shot my gun, dude. Me. I haven't. Well, then explain I, it to I, me. Leslie. I don't know how to explain it, man. How, does, how, does, how is it that your gun is scientifically analyzed and it comes back to the web or to the bullets that were recovered at our crime scenes. Yeah, I don't know what to you tell pawn you, it. You pawn it on the day of the last shooting after the last shooting occurs. No, how no, video no, no, the last shooting. Well, then explain it to me. Where's it at? Let me see these things right here. Where's the last shooting? The last shooting is this copycat shit. Oh, you got my video. I'm shooting my gun. That's cool. Oh, I'm fine riding on the I-10 because I'm not afraid to ride on the I-10. What's that? Oh, what's this one? September 12th. DPS investigating two more incidents. These are so way, now, these are these oh, are these are way, these are way after the incident. These are you're things these me. are things that that you posted after you're saying you after the, the last suspects shooting were arrested. You're saying after the last shooting. The last shooting was the thirtieth. That's when you posted. This is September twelfth. No, no, no. We're not talking about your Facebook. Now you're now you're just trying to twist things. Now you're just trying to show you something. You're trying to twist things, and you're not going to twist it because I, I know no too to much anything. about this case. I have no reason to twist anything. Dude. Well, I have not fired my gun. Man. I don't know what to tell you. Well, I want the truth. I want you to tell me. I don't the know truth. what to tell you. The truth is, I have not shot my fucking gun in at least two months, man. That's the truth. Well, somebody has, and you're it, telling me that you've loaned it to nobody. Nobody, nobody else has man. had it. Nobody. Nobody. I don't know what to tell you, man. Well, I'm telling you that your gun was used to shoot these cars on the yeah, interstate. I'm telling you, my gun. Has not been in my possession or fired by me in about two months. Okay, well then, if you can sit there and provide me with a good reason why your gun has been scientifically. Yeah, I don't know what to that. tell you on that, man. I'm not a scientist. I don't know, man. I have no idea what to tell you well, on that. I can that. only tell you where the evidence is pointing. I know, it all points to me. You got your little thing there that tells me that. Mm -hmm. But I don't know what to tell you on that, man. I don't I have no idea. I'm trying to give you the opportunity to tell me the truth. I'm telling you the truth. I don't know where. The hell this scientific bullshit's coming from, but I have not fired my gun from my hand in two months. That's the truth, okay, man. So is there some reason why you're friends with me on the gun? Because I shoot my gun. Okay. Just trying to see from our point of view. Okay. I understand. You know, we have your gun. My gun, my friends, matches up. Oh, your, no, no. Hand. We have your gun. Mm -hmm. We have the bullets. Mm -hmm. It comes back to you. You know, so I was going to ask you this. When you found my gun, right? Oh, never mind. There wouldn't be no bullets in it because that's the pawn shop. Never mind. That, never mind. Forget I said that. Well, here, here's the thing. You have to understand. It's all going to come out. That's there's okay, search. Man. There are search warrants being served at your house. Mm -hmm. There's a search warrant being served on your car. Mm -hmm. There's other things that are going on that I'm not even going to get into. So it's all going to come out. All I'm trying to do is give you the opportunity to explain to me why. You know what you're going to find out? I know what happened. I know what happened. I just don't know why. rounds on top of a clear dresser because that's the only rounds I have for my gun. Well, I'm just telling you. Because the other ones were stolen out of I know what happened. I just don't know why. They're Winchester 9mm Luger. Here's the thing. I know what happened. I just don't know why. And the only person that has that answer is you. Bro, I can't tell you why because I didn't do it. I don't know how to tell you or what to make you, what to say here, man. Well, uh, well, what I'm trying to figure out is why it happened. Like I said, I know what happened. I just don't know why. I don't know if it was something where somebody was maybe threatening you on the interstate right. and, you know, you felt like you needed to protect yourself. Here, the interrogating officer is lowering the barrier for entry into culpability for the crime by suggesting that perhaps Merritt was defending himself by firing the shots. This would give Merritt the ability to attempt to justify his actions, but at the same time would begin to put Merritt at the scene of the shooting. Just looking at the raw details of the case and the randomness at which the shootings occurred though, it is wildly unlikely that any suspect would bite on this alternate theory. When you're doing this, you know... Dude, I, I, don't know, I have not shot my gun in over two months from... I don't know what to tell you, dude. Well... You know, I don't. I, I wish I knew the answer to tell you here, but I li I, I have not shot my gun in two months, man. Well, I, I all I can tell you is, is I don't believe that I because I, I only I can tell you You're gonna, based on my you evidence. Have hard evidence I absolutely, I have a lot. But of I, don't, I don't know what to tell you on that, dude. My gun is banned. Okay, so why would someone who's kind of close to you tell you that they think you are capable of going and doing something like this? Oh, was that my boss? You get a hold of me asking that? No. No, I'm just saying, you just said somebody close to you. Why would somebody close to you sit there and say that you were capable of doing this? 
A major difference between the leeway interrogators have in the United States of America compared with other areas like Canada is that in the United States, interrogating officers are permitted to lie to suspects in order to extract confessions. In the 1969 case Fraser v. Cup, police were allowed to falsely claim that a suspect's accomplice had confessed, when in reality, he did not. In the 1977 case, Oregon v. Mathiason, police were permitted to lie to the suspect and say they had his fingerprints at the crime scene, when they did not. And in this case, interrogating officers are claiming to have someone who told them that Merritt was certainly capable of this act, but it was never actually verified if this was the case. Merritt even then goes on to bite on this, asking, was it my boss? Validating the statement that they made. The ability to lie to a suspect has no doubt led to many confessions that have put dangerous people behind bars, but it has most likely also led to countless innocent individuals incriminating themselves inadvertently. That you, you have a tendency that it would not be uncommon for somebody to piss you off and that when you get, you know, that when you get pissed off, you get mad. Yeah, I get mad, but I know the difference from fucking stomping someone's ass out or shooting them. I will not use my gun. I'm 280 pounds. I don't need that gun unless someone's breaking into my house. Well, okay, I'm so telling you, the facts are the facts. I understand, sir, but I, uh, damn, dude, I don't know, I don't know what to say to you, dude. Like I said, uh, we're just here trying to figure out why, you know, because I, I, unless, I, unless you can give me a good reason, tell me a good reason why your gun would be ballistically analyzed. All I can say is there's some kind of mix up, man. There has to be because I have not shot my gun in two months. There's, there's no mix up. There, I'm telling you, there's no mix up. I have up. no idea what to tell you then, man, because you know what? You can check my records. I may have missed one or two days in the last two months. I go to work, I come home, and I go to sleep. What did you miss? Probably what, a Monday or I normally miss Mondays because we work hard days and fucking I want a three day weekend because I'm tired. Mm -hmm. Well, if you recall, what days did you miss? I mean, what were the dates? Come on, man. Do you keep track like that of all Absolutely. your Absolutely. I'm, I'm, I'm just surprised that I, I'm just, just surprised you. that you can. I mean, I can, you know, you can't say, I don't know what I was doing on this day. I can tell you a lot of what I'll I was doing. I'll tell you what, two days ago, you know, I asked my wife, oh shit, this Friday's the second, isn't she? No, it's the 18th. I thought today was going to be the 2nd of October, mm -hmm. because how hard I work, I get caught up in the days. What do you want me to tell you, man? Well, I, I, I'm not asking you to tell me anything. I I'm do just, very I'm physical, just, tiring labor. I'm just, I'm just trying, trying, to, days, trying, to, trying to get things figured out as to why. I, like I said, but that's the, the I one thing I don't I can't provide you with that reason, because I didn't do this, man. I understand. Believe me, I'm not calling you a liar. I understand I'm what your evidence you is saying. But I don't know how this happened, bro. I fucking have not shot my gun in two months, dude. And, and like I said, that's why I'm here talking to you. Because my, all my evidence, as you have I know, man. seen a little bit of it, it's, it's I, telling I me a story. I know, but I have no idea what to say here, dude. I don't. I have not fired my gun in at least two months. And, and again, you can't give me a good reason why... Again, we just didn't go get your gun for no reason. There's a reason that because we... Because somebody you fucking called tip line and said, Hey, I want 50 grand. Nope. It wasn't had nothing to do with it. There was no tip to it. It was just plain old police work. There was no tip to it, no nothing. Okay, well how does my name just top up in all this whole investigation? I just told you. We have video they've been videotaping the freeways oh, for a long time perfect. now. And there's they have, there's cameras they have cameras on there right now that just have a live feed. I know cam that. it's not even a live feed, they record. There's cameras every mile on every I know major freeway. I know it's to okay. And those cameras they sit there and they provide us information. I and know. then you take that information and then you move forward, then all of a sudden your that. gun is located at the pawn shop and all my of a sudden thing is, I have not shot my gun in two months. I know that because I know when I go shooting, I know. Well, uh, again, um, like I said, I know what, yeah. I just don't know why. And, and the only one that knows you why is you. You keep trying to say, oh, I did, I did. I'm telling you, dude, I didn't. Well, dude, if you get a polygraph right evidence. now, if you get a polygraph right now, I'll pass that shit because I have not. So you're willing to take a polygraph? I'll fucking take one right now, dude. Okay. Oh, no. It is already fairly widely known that a polygraph is not a reliable barometer of truth. If an individual is guilty but confident and unwavering, they could be deemed as truthful by the polygraph test. On the other hand, if someone is not guilty but very nervous and shaky, the test could find them untruthful. From the suspect's perspective, there is very little positive that comes out of a polygraph. 
and should typically be avoided. I'll take a drug test. I'll take whatever you want. I don't need, I'm, not worried, I'm not worried about a drug test. I'm saying if you're willing to take a polygraph, I will talk to my supervisor and see that. Now my question is, this polygraph, you sure. take this polygraph, and if it comes back and it shows that you're not being truthful with me, then what? Then where do we go? Because then at that There's point, that's gonna all, you have is, all, you have, all, you have is, all you have is all this evidence, and then this polygraph comes back and it says, Leslie's not being honest Okay, with you. but then the where do we go? The only way that'll happen is if someone manipulates the evidence. See, because I know you have I have not shot my what gun. I'm hearing, what I'm hearing is, again, all these people are trying to do this. I'm telling you, this is not an opinionated thing. I know, that's, you did all your, your thieves work and you got, I understand that. I'm just saying. Then explain to me if you're saying it's not yeah, you. Yeah, I don't to me. want me to tell you, man. I have I not let no one use my I'm fucking just gun. You. I have not shot on the fucking. Free. That's just stupid. Well, how did it? Happen? I was fucking retarded. Well, then how did this evidence bring me here? I had good old-fashioned police work, I guess. I don't no, know. No, no, it's. I'm just telling you. How did how did this evidence point me in this direction? If you're telling me you didn't do it, then how did it, how did because how somebody it told you that I'm capable of it? But I'm telling you right now, I don't give a fuck what people say. I can, I'm not gonna hurt someone. I won't take their life. That's ridiculous. Well, didn't say you were trying to hurt anybody. I'm just saying. Sometimes things happen. Sometimes you get people get frustrated. You know how That's many people? Me, bro. I'm That's just saying. That's not me, though. You know how many people that we deal me. with that sit there and they just get frustrated and they just boom, they start popping off rounds out of the car. We deal with that That's all the time. That's not me, man. That's not me, though. I'm, I'm not that stupid and irresponsible to do that. That's what I'm trying to tell you. I can only tell you where we're at on the evidence. I know, man. I, but I just don't know what to tell you on that, man, because I have not shot my gun in two months, dude. No, dude, they don't fly. Do you keep extra ammunition in your car at all? No, no, only the, that 250, actually 256 rounds, because I was going to go to the range. They were stolen. The whole, I had a backpack, Black Jan Sport. 250 rounds, my high point box, ear muffs, and a cleaning kit. Would you, do you feel like you would have known if your gun was fired when these guys had your car? You know, I don't, I mean, I'm, I'm not one to sit there and check it and take it apart and everything. So I, no, I wouldn't have. So, but you, you feel pretty confident that you would have known if you're missing a round out of your magazine? No, I mean, I don't, like I said, I don't, when I take it apart, I don't count it around. I just take them out, I leave them on top of my dresser. So you take the you take your rounds just, out of your magazine, mm -hmm. okay? And how many rounds does your magazine hold? Eight, but I mean I'm not sitting there counting them. I just pop them out, put them in, pop them whenever. So when you're back loading them again, mm -hmm. I don't count them. I just put it in okay. because I don't have I don't put them back into a bucket with more rounds. Whatever I have, just put it right here. And when I get ready to go out, I put them back in. Okay. Do your do yours have the little indicators on the side of the magazines that indicate? It's got like two of view rounds. windows. Two view windows, okay. Anything that you noticed that was out of the ordinary about those view windows? No, man. I, I'm. I don't. What do you call it? Forensically scan my gun every time I use it, man. Okay. I guess. Okay. So what you're saying is that you go home at the end of the day and and you unload your gun, mm -hmm. so so you don't keep it loaded. No. But yet you buy the gun for protection for your family because you're in a bad because you're in a bad neighborhood. Mm -hmm. So what are you gonna do if someone breaks in the house? Well, me and my wife have a strategy. I'll go fend them off, she'll load my gun and bring it to me. Isn't that kind of like a waste of time? Got kids, man. That's all I can tell you. I got kids. I can't just leave a loaded gun in my house. Good point. You know what? Can you give us a couple minutes? Um, I know you mentioned the, the polygraph test, so I'm going to just give a couple minutes um, just so that I can get some additional information to bring back in. And then I'll, I'll sit there and I'll talk to my supervisor and, and let him yeah, know that like, this is something that you're interested in doing and see if it can be set up. So if you give us a couple minutes and we'll come back and, and uh, readdress this, okay? Mm -hmm. Take a break at 23.43 hours. Anything else? You good on water? I'm all right, man. At this point, Merritt has given the interrogating officers very little, if anything, to work with. In their position, what they would like to have happen next is for Merritt to take the polygraph and fail it, so they have a little bit more to put pressure on. At this point, they leave him in the interrogation room for about 10 minutes before returning. How are you doing? 
Okay, we are back in the room. It is $23.55, still on the 18th of September. Okay, Leslie. Yes, um, I went back and reviewed some things. Um, earlier I was asking some questions and I was sitting with some different things because I wanted to get a feel of mm -hmm. when you were being truthful and when you weren't being truthful because obviously I know a lot of things that you don't know. But and I saw, I only heard one honest thing out of you. And uh, that's just based on my knowledge of the case. And when I hit you with, when I hit you with that you were shooting out of your car, that was the only time that you were truthful with me. Only time that you've been truthful with me in this whole entire interview. I'm not lying to you, sir. I'm telling you, that's the only time that you've been honest with me because I went back and I knew that you weren't being honest with me. And then when I hit you with the one thing, just to see, just to see if you were going to be honest and not honest, that's the first time that you were honest with me when you said, yeah, nope, I wasn't shooting in my car. No, it's not. I know you weren't, but that's the only time you've been honest with me in this interview. The rest of the time you have it. Ask yourself, yes, sir. Based on what we have evidence wise, what do you think a jury's going to think? <laughs> By what you have, I have no, I have no lawyer, no way to prove my innocence. Well, so I'm, I'm just far, telling you, if, I'll put it this way if you were on a jury and I'm sitting there mm -hmm. and you're listening to this, and I'm telling you, I have video, I have ballistics testing, you can't, you can't argue the ballistic testing, it is science that you can't argue. I understand that, and you own this gun. Yes. Nobody else has, bond, has borrowed it from you. You have it with you. You have it with you at all times, right? Yeah. When you leave your house for a personal trip, you have it with you, right? Mm -hmm. When you leave it to go to work, you have it with you. Yeah. If you were sitting on a jury, what would you what would you say? I mean, if, if there's a guy fighting to clear his name like that, I'll take into consideration. You know, this guy's really trying to prove that he didn't do this. Just take a minute. Just take a minute. I understand. From and just listen to everything. Twelve people. Maybe one of them will believe me. Well, just listen to the facts. I hear you it, always have the gun. It's always with you at all times. Yes, Nobody sir. has ever borrowed it. Nobody else. You've never loaned it to anybody. You are the one that has that gun at all times. This gun but has been scientifically proven to me. I'm just telling you, if you were sitting on the jury, what would you think? Obviously, like I said, 11 people would say it was me, but I had not done it. And you would be the only one that wouldn't think it was you? So are you saying that you would be the only one out of this 12 jury pool? I don't know. You I'm would be the only one that would be sitting there saying... Well, I'm sure there'd be a couple of people with, you know, maybe he didn't do this. With all the evidence. I understand, sir, but I'm telling you, I did not do this, right? I have no reason to lie, man. I don't want to fucking go to jail. I got a family to take care well, of, man. And, and that's, 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 a, that's another, that's interesting you bring that up, because that's going to be my next point. Um, if... If you're saying that you weren't doing the shootings, yes, sir. I spoke with your wife earlier, mm -hmm. and she said that she was with you on the 29th mm -hmm. all day. Mm -hmm. She said she was with you all day the 30th. Mm -hmm. Is that correct? That's the weekend, man. We're together all weekend. Well, I'm just asking you. Not, not. Yeah, I think, happens. I believe. Yes, sir. Is that the is that the case? I'm with my wife every weekend. Okay. Any day I'm not at work, I'm with so, my wife and kids. So if that's the case and these are dates that these shootings occurred, and you're telling me that you didn't do the shooting, so are you, so are you telling me, no, so all right then, well, then look at where I'm coming with this, so somebody no, had to do it. It wasn't my wife, it wasn't me, man. Well, if you were with her all day, these I days, and these, and these bullets no. were fired on these days, and were recovered on these days, no. and, and they come from your gun. No, she's somebody afraid of gun. She doesn't like the fact that I have a gun, or had a gun now. This is an interesting tactic being used by the interrogating officer. Due to the limited evidence acquired during the investigation, all they really have to rely on is the ballistics analysis. The officers are in a situation where he is denying everything thrown at him. In an effort to make him confess, the interrogating officer implies that if it wasn't Merritt who did the shooting, and he was with his wife during those days, perhaps it was her who did it putting her in the crosshairs of law enforcement. Now, the interrogating officer is fully aware that the likelihood that his wife is the shooter is slim to none, but he is hoping that Merritt will confess to the shootings to potentially save his wife from the accusation. So, I mean, you, know what I'm, you, know, you understand what I'm saying? I hear you, man, but no, neither one of us. You know, it, it, 
it has to be one or the other here. No, it's not. That's what I don't know to tell you, man. Neither one of us. Okay. Neither well, one of us, man. You said that you, you've gone shooting recently out by PIR. Mm -hmm. Have you gone shooting any other place recently? The only, the only place I've gone is PIR or Shooter's World. That's okay. it. Okay. And have you gone with anybody? Has anybody gone with you when you've gone shooting? Uh, my sister-in-law and her boyfriend. Okay. And who's your sister-in-law? Serafina Barone. Okay. And who's your brother? No, her boyfriend. I'm sorry, her boyfriend. I apologize. His name's Marcos. I don't know his last name. She left her husband and now she's with that dude. That's all I can tell you. Okay. And, and do you recall when you went shooting with them? I know it was a Saturday. I'm not even worried about Damon, okay? Mm -hmm. I'm talking your wife. I'm talking people that are close yeah, no, to you. I wouldn't say that. Well, I'm, I'm telling you I spoke to her earlier, and you know she was here earlier, and mm -hmm. you know that I spoke with her. Mm -hmm. I'm telling you, I've spoke to people that are close to you, and they've all told me the same story. The same story is that when Leslie does something wrong, Leslie won't own up to it. What he does is he blames everybody else. There's always another reason, there's another person, this and that. And then it makes you and then, run the same story on No, her. no, no, no. There is there is there is no running no story, okay? Because it makes sense to me. Because, because I'm listening I'm listening to you and I'm listening to Damon. Is this another one of your conspiracy type stuff here? No, because no, I'm telling I'm you, telling you right now. I'm telling I'll you what they up. told me. I own up to my shit. Well, obviously you're not owning it up to it. You can ask my boss. I fucked up uh, somebody's concrete with a bobcat. You know what? We I'm already talking? know. We already know all about that. Talking and that was, was that was another one of the things that we were told that you tried to sit there and say somebody else did. That's a crock of shit. Well, I'm not telling you a crock of shit. I'm telling you. I'm telling you the facts. I'm telling you what I was told. And what I was told, I knew all about that. Okay. Doing the donuts and then losing the load. I, I, I never lost the Yeah, it was, it, it, what, what they told us, what they told us, it was, it was like some bricks that were on board, there were some donuts, and then the bricks went all over the place, and, and that was donuts and a bobcat, leaving tire marks everywhere. Yeah, I never lost the load because I don't, the only time I used to bobcat. about doing tire marks and a bobcat? Yeah, I did that. Okay. Fuck yeah, I did that. And then you blame somebody else on it? No. Okay. Why would your own wife even go and tell us, yeah, I think he did it? Why would she <laughs> even tell she us that? that? No, I'm telling you, she said that. Bullshit. I'm just telling you. He's telling you. He's being honest with you. I'm being honest with you, man. She said that you At the end of the conversation, of this. she said you are capable of going and doing something like this. She, yeah. yeah. So that's where I'm confused, Leslie, because talking to these people, mm -hmm. they're all telling me that you have a tendency to want to blame everybody else. How close can you zoom up on those cameras? Because I'm telling you right now, you will not see me firing a fucking gun on the freeway, man. So, 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 okay, so who are we going to see? I can't tell you that because I don't know. My gun has been at the pawn shop or in my damn fucking closet, man. That's it. I don't shoot my gun in a city like that. That's just stupid. It's just, just I, I'm not that dumb, man. Well, you know what? It's not a matter of trying to question your intelligence. Everybody, no, every, everybody does stupid things. Yeah, but I'm telling you, I would never fire my gun at a person unless they're an immediate threat to me. I didn't say that you were firing at a person. You're saying I was firing at cars. There are people okay. in those cars, correct? Absolutely. I would not do that. Absolutely. Okay, so then was someone in a in a a a uh, threat to you? No, no. While driving? No. So you tell me that when you're driving on the freeway, when someone say, say for example, got a little too close, a little no, bit of like a uh, road rage, you never gone and shown your gun no, at them? No. I flip mine. Truth right there. That's true, man. I have no. I, I understand that a gun is a very fearful thing to a lot of people. So I'm not just gonna go, hey, fuck you. That's stupid. You you don't do that shit. I mean, I'm being as honest as I can be here, guys. I don't know what to tell you. I didn't do this. My wife didn't do this. I don't know. I don't have the answer. You know, all I can tell you is I've tried to give you every opportunity to explain why. Like Sir, I said, I'm telling you, know, I can't explain. I know, I know what. I, I'm sorry, Leslie, I can't I understand, sir, get beyond I'm, that. I, I know what happened. I just don't know why. And we're trying, we've tried every which way. Are you trying to cause fear to the public with all no, these theories you have going on your head? Trying to cause fear to the public? I got no reason to do that, man. I don't know, maybe doing that is spite. You know, you seem to have a fascination about going to jail, about about, stuff, about, about, about stuff, about stuff going, about certain people going and being in prison. You were asking Damon about his time in prison. Your dad was in prison. Was your dad in prison? Yeah, that doesn't mean I want to go to prison. Okay, but you have a, a, a 
according to him, you, like you have a good little fascination about it. Like you're constantly. Got I like to know what it's like in there, yeah. Because you know what, I have people that say, you know, what? prison changes. And I say, well, how is that? Okay. What happened to you in prison that you changed? Okay, so then right there, do you think you need to be changed? No, I don't know. I'm not in a prison, dude. I'm living my life the right way. I don't get in no trouble. I don't steal. I don't go out and hurt people. I go to work and I come home and pay my bills. That's it. Okay, so you have at all. So, like, have you ever been arrested before? Mm hmm. Okay, for what? Getting in fights with my family. That's most of them. Uh, and then, what was it? 17. No, 18, because my son was born. I got uh, arrested for stealing copper off telephone poles. And I still owe restitution on that. How would you describe that you deal with frustrations in your life, Leslie? Well, most of the time I just breathe through it, man. I, you can't. Once in a while I get mad, I'll hit a wall. I ain't gonna lie. Fuck yeah, I'll hit a wall. Other than that, I just breathe through it, try to calm myself down, walk away from the situation. It's not worth it. Okay. How would you describe your life right now? Is there any frustrations going on? It's frustrating that I'm being. I understand you have evidence. I'm not trying to call you a liar or anything, sir. It's very frustrating when I'm telling you I did not do this. And yes, you did. Yes, you did. No, I well, didn't. Like I said, I, I don't have to tell you anything mm -hmm. because my evidence stands on its own. I understand, I understand that. So I don't, I don't have to tell you anything. Mm -hmm. I'm just trying to figure things out. You're here. trying to, I know. And, and like I said, I'm just trying to figure out how you deal with stress. I know how people, that, like I said, that are close to you that I've spoke with, how they've told me that, you know, that when you get stressed, you you get angry, you get yeah, mad, I you get frustrated, or, or somebody does something that you don't like. You just, well, I will you never get use a weapon in very angry. I won't. So, you know, I have logical thoughts when I'm mad. I'm not a, a fucking mad ape guy out there just destroying shit. By no means, call no, I understand. Me. I'm just, as a, uh, what do you call that? Example. Mm -hmm. I'm not just gonna flip my shit and, ah, oh, fuck everyone. No. No. My wife didn't. I know she didn't. She's afraid of guns. I didn't. In fact, she can't even drive on the freeway. She ain't got a license. She just drives occasionally because I'm trying to teach her so she can get a license. Because come tax season, I want to get a truck so she can have a car to take my kids to appointments while I'm at work. Me? Okay. White, so, brown, same color here as me. So you think you pawned it on the 29th? I just talk to you just a second. Absolutely. Let me take a break. It's, uh, it's zero fifteen hours on the nineteenth of September. Okay. Oh yeah, man. Okay, we are back in our room. It's double zero, 26 hours on the 19th of September. All right, Leslie. Yes, sir. Just uh, kind of like a final question here for you. It's really not a question of, of the gun that was used or the rounds that was used. We know it was your gun. Mm -hmm. What the question comes down to is this. Was your finger on the trigger, and then if so, or, and then if not, whose finger was on the trigger? Because we're going to get a physical characteristics order, we're going to swap you. We're going to get DNA on the gun, we're going to get DNA on the cards, okay? So that's the question I have for you. Mm -hmm. My DNA is on the gun because it is my gun. I have not shot on any freeways, no one in my car or my family. My wife, nobody, has shot my gun on the freeway. I don't know what to tell you guys, man. I, all I can tell you is me and my wife did not do this. I have no, <laughs> I don't know what to tell you guys. Well, I'll, I'll be honest with you, Leslie. I don't think your wife did it either. I know. And I, and I feel pretty confident. And um, I think that was a question that only you can answer, you know. Um, we know that your gun was involved. I understand. And the shooting's on the freeway. But I'm telling you, I did not. And as Detective Falcone said, 
either your finger was on the trigger was or you know whose finger was on the trigger and you witnessed it. And if you're going to sit here and tell me I don't know, then there's nothing else that I have. Because So, um, you know, like you said, I've given you opportunities here. And I, I wish, so, I'm telling you again, I wish I knew what to tell you again. Okay. Well, we're going to go ahead and we'll conclude the interview. And like I said, we'll start your booking paperwork. And like I said, if you change your mind, all you got to do is yell at me. I don't know what to tell you, I didn't do it. I don't, there's no change in my mind because I didn't do this. Okay, this includes the interview is double zero, 31 hours. Okay, go ahead and see here. Let us get the detention staff. So is there no the polygraph there? Uh, you know what? If the county attorney's office decide that that's a, a thing that they want to... But you know they won't use that because that's not valuable in court. Absolutely. Shortly following this interrogation, Leslie Merritt was granted a first appearance in court. He was issued a $1 million bond. Merritt was suspected in being involved in at least four of the 11 shootings on the Phoenix Freeway, and charged with an act of intentional terrorism, discharging a firearm within city limits, criminal damage, endangerment, and disorderly conduct. This suspect uh, presents a dramatic and profound threat to the community. Shackled in prison stripes, 21-year-old Leslie Merritt Jr. was defiant at his first court appearance. May I speak? He's accused of at least four of the 11 freeway shootings that have panicked Phoenix drivers for weeks. A judge had just ordered Merritt held on $1 million bail and warned him about self-incrimination, but Merritt spoke anyway. All I had to say is that I'm the wrong guy. I tried telling the detective that. But authorities say they have the right guy because they traced his gun to a local pawn shop. Merritt, a father of two, was arrested last night in a Walmart parking lot. Arizona Public Safety Director Frank Milstead. The weapon that he owned uh, is forensically linked to these crimes. Those shootings began August 29th, less than a month ago. In court, Merritt tried to defend himself. My gun's been in the pawn shop for the last two months. I haven't even had access to a weapon. Well, that's easy to, to verify. Tim Franklin is a criminology professor at Arizona State University. Were you surprised that he spoke in court? Yes, stunned, and he did so against the advice of the judge. What does that tell you? Arrogance. By the time his trial had concluded, he was indicted on 15 felony counts by a Maricopa County grand jury and was sent to prison. There was one slight problem, though. Now, seven months later, a total turnaround in the freeway shootings case. Just days after Leslie Merritt Jr. was released from jail, the state moving to dismiss all charges against him. Question now, how did we get here and what went wrong? The evidence gathered by DPS wasn't sufficient to tie Leslie Merritt to any of the shootings. Flash forward seven months, the county attorney's office calling for a second ballistics test to confirm if Merritt's gun was really connected to four of the shootings, like DPS said last September. And that evidence is at the heart of the case. That raises real questions about, about the prosecution. When the bullets were tested again, it was found that they did not fully match the gun owned by Merritt the way investigators initially said that it did with the forensics analyst saying that they could neither include nor exclude Merritt's gun from the case. What's more, Merritt had an alibi for the days the shooting took place, which was ignored by investigating officers. It also came to light that Merritt's gun was not even in his possession at the time of one of the shootings. It was at a pawn shop. However, due to the fact that the driver did not discover the bullet hole until later on, DPS moved the date of the shooting to fit the date that the gun was in Merritt's possession. Is it yes or no, sir? If you can't answer it as a yes or no, tell him you can't answer it as a I, yes or no. I can't answer that as a yes or no. Okay. Would you agree that, and we'll get to this, that the crime lab says that Mr. Merritt's gun was responsible for the shooting? Yes. Would you agree that the BMW driver said that it happened Sunday night, August 30th at... 9.45 p.m. or thereabout. Yes. Would you agree that the pawn slip shows that the gun was in pawn at the time? Yes. And based on that, would you agree that with respect to the victim's contention, the pawn slip is exculped? Based off that argument, yes. And it was not included in the affidavit? No. 
So would it be fair to say that there's a number of pieces of potentially exculpatory information that you did not include in your affidavit? The exculpatory information, according to you, that I did not include is the pawn slip. And the physical evidence doesn't support that as exculpatory evidence anyway, so it was not included. So basically, everything you have for probable cause is based on the DPS crime lab, and everything else doesn't add up. All the other issues don't add up. Everything else is based on the physical evidence that the bullet that was recovered out of that car was a ballistic match to the other four and his gun. And for that to be right, everything else has to be wrong. True? True. I don't have any further questions at this time. With this information coming to light, Merritt's lawyers moved to have his case dismissed. Following this, he was released from prison with an ankle monitor until his next court appearance. Told them about what was going on. Actually, guys, right now, I'm stepping out right now. Leslie Merritt Jr. stepping out of jail in the lower Buckeye jail. He's been locked up uh, since September 19th. He's been in so solitary confinement. You can imagine just the relief he has right here. And Thank you, everybody, for coming out and showing your support. I told you guys when I first got arrested, I didn't do it. I'm telling you now I'm going home. I didn't do it. Right now, I just want to go home and uh, be with my kids. And thanks, everybody, for supporting me. Thanks for my lawyers and everybody who's helping us out. I'm going to go home now. And in August of 2020, a judge issued that all records relating to the freeway shooter be sealed and stated that Merritt has been cleared on any allegation or charge in the interest of justice. It was highly speculated that the police department knowingly pursued Merritt as a suspect on what they knew was shaky evidence because they were trying to calm the public as soon as possible, even if it meant potentially getting the wrong person. Merritt went on to pursue a lawsuit against the police department for wrongful arrest. With the knowledge that Merritt was not the freeway shooter, a second analysis of his interrogation becomes very interesting. As does the upsetting footage of officers interrogating Merritt's then fiance Footage that emerged after Merritt was released from prison. Not a bad person. If that's what you guys are looking for, he's not a bad person. Why would your own wife even go and tell us, yeah, I think he did it? Okay, right now, listen up. There's a thing called a, 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 a domestic terrorism charge. Yeah. Okay? That's what you're looking at. Okay? That kind of includes the whole family. Okay? If you have knowledge of what's going on, I strongly suggest that you tell us right now. I don't know because what's going on. you will be included. I don't! I swear to God, I don't! I don't know what is... No, she said that. No, I'm telling you, she said that. Bullshit. No, I'm just telling you. He's telling you. He's being honest with you. I'm being honest with you, man. She said that you At the end of the conversation, this. she said you are capable of going and doing something like this. She if you've seen a number of interrogation videos or interrogation analysis videos, one pattern you might notice is typically when a guilty suspect is facing a direct accusation, it is very difficult for them to flat out deny involvement. When presented with evidence of culpability, many guilty suspects might say, well, that's strange. I don't know how that would be possible. Or, really? I don't remember that. Part of the reason for this could be that a guilty individual, when presented with an accusation or even evidence of wrongdoing, now has to think up a lie, an excuse, or an explanation for that evidence or accusation. I, I may have met her. Um, geez, you know... Yeah. Uh, well, let me see. Let me ask you. You said you you dated John. How long did you guys date? I mean, well, are you guys? Is this something? I mean, you said I was going to interview somebody about art, and how well, you guys are. Here's. here's uh, I mean, Stephanie. Here's the situation. It's basically, we, you know, we knew that this uh, when we saw this in the in in this chrono that maybe you know there was some relationship there. That's what the chrono seemed to indicate, and we didn't want to come up to you at your desk and ask those kinds of questions or do anything. You know how up there people can see what's going on if you go into an interview room or people are in there getting oh, supplies. Okay. I mean, so we, we at, at the school at UCLA, you guys kind of were friends during and after school, so I don't know if you guys still associated afterwards when, once he was married or anything. With him? Yeah. No, I don't think so. Yeah. I mean... The thing is, I mean, detectives did what they could at that time on the crime scene, okay? And the burglary thing you're talking about, that is an angle that they looked at. 
And I go, but now we're looking at everything else on the case. Because nobody was ever arrested <laughs> on the case. I, I don't know that or not. Okay. Now, what we'd like to do is, obviously you know about all the DNA stuff and things of the nature that, you know, gets done on cases nowadays. You know, if we asked you for a, a DNA swab, would you be willing to give us one? Maybe. <laughs> Because now, 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 yeah, because now, now I'm thinking I probably need to talk to a lawyer. Okay. I mean, well, I because I know how this stuff works. Okay, don't get me wrong. You're right. I have been doing this a long time. You know, it's possible we may have some DNA at the location. That's great. And we're going to do what we can to try to put this thing together. And your name's in the book. These people are pointing at you for whatever reason. <laughs> I don't know why. And that's just crazy. I mean, that's just, that's absolutely crazy. And it would be irresponsible on our part not to look at it. I know. You guys have to do your job, and, and I guess I'm going to have to contact somebody. So That's fair. I mean, because uh, I know how this stuff works. Sure. I mean, I, 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 I just can't believe it. It's actually much more common to see an innocent individual who is being accused wholeheartedly and relentlessly deny involvement because they don't have to worry about coming up with alternative theories, lies, or excuses. All right, so I mean, I, she's saying that I was there before. Is that what she's saying? She's saying she's seen my face before the act, before the break-in happened? Yeah. I didn't break in her house. I don't, I don't know who she is. I don't know what you're talking about. I don't know no girl named Candy. None of shit. Why is she saying that you're... I don't know why she's saying she's... I don't know why I don't know. What were you doing there? I was not there. I was not... I don't know this girl Candy. I ain't never went in that girl's house. None of that shit. I didn't do that shit. I did As God is my fucking witness, I did not do it. And she got injuries. No, man. And hell no, man. Get her goddamn boyfriend, Tim Stone, in here and question him about her goddamn injuries. Look at that straight right there. This sounds like it's a goddamn thing of fucking her boyfriend, Tim Stall, done fucking done something to her, and now they're trying to put it on me. That's exactly, I know that's what the fuck this is. And look, that's why we're talking to you, okay? No, this is bullshit, man, because I've tried everything in my fucking power to stay the fuck out of this goddamn fucking penitentiary shit. I did not do that shit, man. Okay. That's, that's why we're talking to you. We're here to, we're here to investigate this, okay? From the moment that Leslie Merritt had the accusation brought up, to the last minutes of the interrogation, he vehemently denied having any involvement in the shootings. He never wavered, nor did he change his story at any point during the interview. Sir, I have nothing to explain. I did not do this, man. Well, I'm, like I said, well, I'm not going to admit this. Hold on, I did not hold do, on, man. Hold on. And why I did it, why I did not do it. I have not fired my gun, dude. That's well, bullshit. I'm just... All I can say is there's some kind of mix of man. There has to be because I have not shot my gun in two months. There's, there's no mix. Dude, if you get a polygraph right now, if you get a polygraph right now, I'll pass that shit. Look at where I'm coming with this. So somebody no, had to do it. It wasn't my wife. It wasn't me, man. It's very frustrating when I'm telling you I did not do this. And yes, you did. Yes, you did. No, I well, didn't. I don't know what to tell you guys, man. I honestly don't. Well, all I can tell you, Leslie, is I'm just not being. Like movie cops being assholes, because all I can tell you, man, is I, I don't know who did it, and me and my wife did not do this. I, I can't tell you anything other than that. Even the attempts by the officers to throw him off guard, such as by saying they had people who attested to the fact that he was capable of doing this, or even that his own wife made these claims about him, didn't make him pause or change his story. Merritt was awarded $100,000 by the Maricopa County Attorney's Office as part of a settlement for the first part of his lawsuit. As for the $2 million lawsuit regarding wrongful arrest and false imprisonment, a jury found that the state was not liable. However, Merritt's lawyer, Jason Lamb, said in a statement, No matter the legal wrangling, one fact does not and will not ever change. That Leslie Merritt Jr. was not, is not, and will never be the I-10 freeway shooter. Mr. Merritt, whoever said he's the I-10 shooter is a... Moron. Have a good night.